What's going on hikers? In today's video, I'm going to give you some hiking gear if you're on a budget. If you're new to the channel, my name is Jeremiah Stringer and here we talk about all things hiking and backpacking. So if you're into that kind of thing, consider subscribing to the channel. Now, all these are going to be linked in the description below if there's anything you want to check out more specifics on, but we're going to kind of do an overview of a number of items. So let's start with the first thing. I'm going to talk about my cook kit and some ways that you could save some money and get some gear for cheap. So let's take a look at that cook kit. Let's start with uh, an alcohol stove. Now, I've only used this one in particular for a couple of different times. I used it really recently on a trip to the Big South Fork. And I mean, I didn't have any problems with it. It does come with cons though. Of course, you got to pack the fuel, but you're going to do that anyway, right? And then uh, secondly, this is made out of a beer can. And Taz on my Foothills Trail hike gave my wife and I both one. And what you'll see is it's not the most super durable. Like if I push it in there, it's going to flex. But it is super cheap because you can make it pretty much for free. Like Taz picks these up off the side of the road and just makes them in his spare time. Um, I know Tim Watson, I'll, I'll link his video here if you want to make your own. He done one out of like cat food, I think. So lots of great tutorials online on how to do these. Um, you all can check them out. Let's talk about a more traditional setup with uh, a propane or butane canister and a canister stove. So this is actually my entire cook kit. And um, we'll talk in particular about this little BRS stove. I'm not going to spend too much time on it because I actually did my own review of it not too long ago. But the good thing is this is really cheap. But, I mean, sometimes cheap isn't the best thing. Like, it won't be the most durable as well, but it'll get you through. Like, I used it on my entire through hike. And then, um, of course, a canister. This paired together. I mean, at only 27 grams, I think it was. This is a, a major buy. This is, this is super cheap, super budget friendly. And if you're looking to get started and you're wanting a budget friendly stove, this would be my go-to. Now the con with this one is, um, if you can see there, the edges will let your pot slide off sometimes. So you gotta make sure you're on level ground. And the way I do that is I'll just put this on, of course the fuel, and then whenever I sit it down, <clears throat> I'll put my pot of water on it before I light it. And then if it looks level and it looks like it's not going to slide, I'm good to go. Because you can kind of see whenever the pot is sitting on top there, you can see if it's level or not. Because the water will be shifted. So that's a little tip for you if you're interested in buying um, a canister stove. You don't have to buy this one, but this is a great budget-friendly option. Um, also, the cook pot that I'm using, this is uh, a Stanco cook pot. And it is also a great budget item because it's only like six or seven bucks on Amazon. And it actually is a grease pot. <laughs> John Kelly, JK is hiking. He texted me the other day and he's like, I didn't know you were using a grease pot the entire time whenever, you know, you, <laughs> you had your cook kit. And I was like, yep, man, learn that one from Dixie. That's, it's a great one. So, yep, see that? A <laughs> grease pot. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the, the next item. So the next item I'm going to talk about is tents. And you got to sleep somewhere when you're in the back country. Um, one that I've heard a lot about, and I actually saw it for the first time in person on a recent trip in the Big South Fork again. Josh was using it, and it is the Lanshan 2. It's a two-person tent, which I would only use it as a one-person tent, to be honest. But I don't want to say it's a knockoff of the duplex, but it's a similar setup. And it uses two trekking poles, and you set it up, you guide out, it gives you a little bit more space, kind of like the duplex. And for less than $200, this is a great budget option, especially if you're just getting started, and it'll give you plenty of space. Now it's a two wall tent, which means it has an outer and an inner, and that's good news because um, you'll deal with less condensation, but it's bad news because it adds a little bit of extra weight. Now this tent in particular, it weighs approximately 2.5 pounds, so that's not super great, but it's a lot better than the tent I started with, because I started with a three-person tent, and it weighed like five pounds. I was like, man, this is killing me. And then I wanted to give you a second option, which is one that I've been using whenever I go solo, or when I say solo, I mean my wife's not in the tent with me, and it is the Six Moons Designs Lunar Solo. 
And this one in particular, it costs $200 and it weighs about 1.6 pounds. Um, but it's also non-freestanding, which means you have to use either trekking pole or I actually bought a carbon fiber stick and then tack on another $30 if you don't want to seam seal it yourself. And I was like, ah, that's not worth it to me to seam seal it myself. I'll pay the th extra $30. So you can buy that right now, seam seal from the company for $230, which I know sounds expensive, but tents cost um, quite a bit to be honest. And what I do with this tent is I set it up. I use the carbon fiber um, little tent pole or whatever with it. And then I set my, my two trekking poles out beside and guy out my tent. And that gives me a lot more room in there as well. And another thing I love about this tent is that it has, it's almost like a teepee. It has a little piece that pulls out and it gives you a lot more space inside. So you got room to keep your gear inside if that's what you want to do. Okay, let's move on to the third budget item today. Third budget item is the Trekology pillow, and they did come out with the version 2.0 recently. I don't know if it's better than this version 1.0 that I've been using. And this thing, I wouldn't suggest blowing it up all the way if you're going to lay your head on it. I actually let a little air out, and I keep it more like this. Probably better for a tent than a, a hammock, but I let quite a bit of air out. And then I keep this between my knees to keep my knees from pushing together while I'm sleeping there at night. This thing, I think it's about $15 to $16 right now as of filming this video. And you can buy it on Amazon. I mean, if you don't like it, just return it. But it seems like a perfectly fine filler to me, Sea to Summit. This is kind of knockoff of uh, the Sea to Summit, Eros, I believe it's called. So it weighs 2.8 ounces. And that's pretty good compared to like a foam pillow. And it compacts really, really well. So if y'all want to check it out, Trekology. So number four today. This is something I don't think we talk enough about. And it's your clothing. And in the back country, you obviously don't walk around naked, or at least I don't. So whenever I'm out there, I got to wear something. Let's talk about the cheapest way to get these clothes. Cheapest way is to go in your closet and see what you already have. Now, you're not going to have everything that you need, but you probably do have like an athletic t-shirt. You may have a fleece that you could put on if you're going in the fall or the winter. And um, you probably don't have a puffy yet. <laughs> There's really not a great budget option for a puffy, in my opinion. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't cheap out on that. And then a beanie. You probably already have a beanie or a hat that you could wear. Now, Here's where you can save some real money. A lot of people go out and they buy like the Under Armour heated thermal gear. And they're like, okay, these are going to be my base layers. This is what I'm going to sleep in. This is what I'm going to wear. You know, if it's cold outside, you can do that. And that's fine, but that's expensive. So the alternative is to go to your local thrift shop. For me, that's a Goodwill. And you can find lots of good clothing there, especially like my fleece. I paid three, four dollars for a Columbia fleece there. And a lot of times you can get pants like the synthetic bottoms, the cargo pants or whatever. And if you're a man, you can actually go into the women's section. Don't get caught up in, um, you know, which gender the clothing is supposed to be sold to. A lot of times, and Nathan, shout out to you for giving me this idea. A lot of times the women will, they'll go donate the leggings and that would make a perfect base layer for you. You know, especially if you're going during the uh, colder weather. So check out those thrift shops and see if y'all can find some clothing on the cheap. Let's talk about the next item on today's list. <laughs> Rain jackets. That's right. This is a place where you can save a little money. Let me show you what I got. This is one step above the base version of the Frog Togs. Got these at Walmart for, I don't know, $25, $30, but it is only the rain jacket. I'm actually not a huge fan of the rain pants. Uh, most of the time, if I'm hiking and it's raining, my legs are going to get wet anyway, either through sweat or through the rain. But I do have quite a bit of experience with frog togs. Let me show you. Here's you uh, some rain pants. That is the basic frog togs. I've blown out the crotch of a couple of those. And here's your rain jacket. Here's you another rain jacket. Here's you another rain jacket. And how about another rain jacket? I know, a lot of rain jackets. Uh, 
you know, frog togs, they're great, except they're not the most super durable. So you're getting what you pay for here, but for only $20, you can buy a second pair versus, you know, a $200 rain jacket. You can buy a cheap $20 pair and get the, the pants and you can get the uh, rain jacket. But here's my number one gripe with them. Uh, it is great budget option, but it's also cheap. You get some of that action going. So you can see my finger there. These get hung on branches very, very easily. So I would only suggest going with the, the frog togs if you're making sure you're staying on trail. If you're doing any backcountry off trailing, probably wouldn't be the best option for you. Probably be better to just go ahead and spend the money on um, you know a nicer set that isn't gonna rip whenever they get caught on a twig. Now with that said, if you are somebody that plans on staying on trail, maybe you're doing the AT or maybe you're doing a pretty well maintained trail or you're just going out and getting out, um, the Frog Togs could be the perfect fit for you. Again, all these things are linked in the description. So if you wanna know weights or um, prices or that kind of stuff, you can check that out. Now I need your help. I want you to comment and give me some other great budget options that you've been using in the backcountry. Tell me what you think about these products. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure you give me a like, subscribe, and kick the notification bell for the latest notifications. We'll see you in the next video. Coffee break. Listen to that. Isn't that disgusting? Doing a little on-the-fly research. Come on, baby. You can do it.